in heaven or on whatever the higher dimension of reality is, you and I may exist in some incorporeal form. We may be a ghost or a spirit. We may be pure spirit. Or we may be, as the Hermetics believe, just a nothing but a thought in the mind of God. But here on earth, we have a body. Our body, our flesh, does the thinking for us. It'll exhibit, no matter what we do, it'll exhibit all the kind of symptoms of fear called whatever they are, autonomic reactions, autonomic system reactions. You know, the, the mouth goes dry, the hands sweat, the hands tremble. Um, our voice may become that kind of chicken voice. Uh, we may be uh, tempted to just run. If anything we have in our hands, we'll drop out of our hands. We may abandon the things we love, people we love, and just flee for the hills. And this is just an automatic reaction of fear. In fact, Alexander the Great, even Alexander the Great, towards the end of his life, used to stay up all night sacrificing to the god Phobos, the god fear. So in Gates of Fire, when Dionysus is instructing his protege, Alexandros, he re and he says to him, this is the factory of fear. What he means is the flesh, the human body, that these responses are built right into w the way we are. And not just us as human beings, but every animal. Watch any animal in the wild and they have a flight distance. And when you get close to, too close to it, they're going to take off. Fear is the predominant emotion on this material plane. If you think about hoplite warfare, the way the Greeks had to fight, it was fear was the predominant emotion that was there. Think about if you were one of the warriors in the phalanx there, you're on one side of a field, you have all the time in the world, the enemy is across from you, you can see them, minutes go by, hours may go by, finally you kind of start toward them, a pace, a cadence, you're doing everything in your power, the, the Greeks would sing as they went on like that to try and work the lungs and get the breath going. They would encourage each other as they would go. They would keep cadence to pipes or to drums or something like that because fear was everything. Now, the reason that we study the warrior archetype, the reason I'm doing this whole series is because in our lives today, you know, we in America, we have this thing, we don't want to admit that we're ever afraid. You know, people will, will do incredible things that, that uh, you know, surf 60-foot waves or something, but never admit that they really are afraid. Well, I, I can tell you just for my own self and my own just life as a writer, we're filming this in my office right now, my typewriter, you know, my computer is right over there. And I can tell you that in the morning when I get up and I have to go over there and sit down at that keyboard and face a blank page, I'm terrified. And a lot of times when I look at my day and I've got this and this and this planned, I go, my God, I'm scared to death. I've got to do this and this and this and the other thing. Now, this is why, to me, the concept of the warrior archetype and the virtues of a warrior are so important that even in my civilized life that I have here, I need to gear myself up using those same virtues that, that a warrior would in the hoplite phalanx. The, virtue, the, the virtues of selflessness, of patience, of endurance, of courage, of the willing embrace of adversity, of embracing something that's hard, embracing something that's beyond me. Now, there's one other thing that I want to, a point I want to make if I can articulate this. I think that if there are two levels of reality, and I believe that there are, the material plane and the higher plane that we were talking about at the start of this thing, each time you and I can overcome our fear, even for a moment, you know, even just to face the blank page or get up and do public speaking or confront our spouse or someone that we love on a difficult issue, what, we're, what we do then is we act according to the laws not of this plane, of the factory of fear, of the flesh, but of the higher plane, where we are pure spirit or whatever we are on that level, and where fear doesn't exist anymore, but is replaced by love. 
And I think really that in the ancient world, I've always kind of wondered, you read about these city-states in ancient Greece, how they had a war every month of the year except the winter. The only thing that would stop them was the winter. And you wonder why, why did they do this? What were they fighting over? Who cares if an olive grove belonged to this city or that city? And I think that there was a kind of a ritual sense to the whole thing, a ritual overcoming of the god Phobos, because it would take them to the higher level, to that level where fear didn't exist, but instead love existed. I may be crazy, but this is my belief about a part of why there was so much appeal and so much uh, ritual presence in those battles that they fought back in those days. Thank you.